everyone. Brandon with HBG Capital. Thanks for tuning in. Today's episode is all about how to find big, giant, juicy equity land deals, neighborhoods, apartment complexes. I'm going to show you exactly what we're doing today right now in our business that works, what other people are using, and some hidden marketing sources to be able to pull some of these off-market deals through. But first, if you've gotten value from these podcasts, please like, subscribe, and share these with your friends and family. It is the currency that helps us in the podcast world. Also, if you have been interested in learning more about recession-resistant real estate and receiving passive income secured by real estate direct to your bank account, head to our website, hbgcapital.net. Schedule a call with us on the calendar. We look forward to getting to know you. All right, so jumping into today's episode, I'm going to go over three different ways that we're finding deals right now. And I think I'm going to save the best one for last, the one that we're using the most. So let's rewind a bit. I'm going to tell you the method that we were using. Let's call it the spray and pray. Spray and pray method works. And it's probably by far the most utilized way to, uh, to find deals right now. When I say deals, I'm talking about real estate deals. It doesn't matter if it's single family, multifamily, uh, land. I mean, you name it. This works for everything. So it starts with creating a list to go after. And some popular resources that have worked for us that we've used have included Property Radar, List Source is a really good one. I mean, there's a ton of great places to go and grab good data. And this industry is moving so fast, there's new and better data resources every single day hitting the market. So I don't want to get caught in the weeds like there, but you can filter by certain metrics. I'm going to tell you what filters we've done, what's worked, and how we've set up the operations to be able to receive these and actually close on some of these deals. Again, all under the spray and pray method. So we're big fans of using list source, using mailers, cold calling, text messaging, uh, and we like actually showing up on the doorstep too. More on that later. So I'm not going to go over you know which one works the best. They all work. Some work better than others. Some cost more than others, but whatever suits your fancy, they all work. I want you to know that. I know people who've built entire businesses on just one specific type of marketing method because it works where someone else can be super successful in it. Somebody else can also be successful in it if they figure out the time and effort and, and uh, systems and processes to make it be successful. So I don't want to get caught in the weeds on that, but typically we like to filter in the areas that we want to buy for 40% equity or more. And these are all little dashboards that you can click on whatever data resource that you're pulling information from. 40% uh, equity, usually 55 and older. They've owned the property for at least seven plus years. It's not in an LLC. So we're looking for basic people names. Typically those are people who are more likely to sell. Don't ask me why. If it's locked up in an LLC, it's usually a business owner, somebody who wants to hang on to it for long term. And it's a lot tougher to find accurate information for LLC owners. That's another reason why we don't filter for LLCs. They're, the owner's true mailing address is uh, usually hidden and they don't get your mail piece. So typically we are mailing them, we are calling them, we are texting them, and we're going and we're knocking on the doors. Now we have the operations set up where if anybody goes to the website or calls in or responds to a text, they automatically go to our Podio CRM software, customer relationship management software. And that's where we store all the leads, where we have someone called a lead intake who will then answer that phone call or actively reach out to that person if they've reached out to us and try to get them on the phone and try to get an appointment scheduled. From that point, we immediately have a sales rep go and we try to close the deal. That's the spray and pray method, nuts and bolts. The next one I want to go over is referrals. And again, I'm saving the best one for last year. So stay tuned to the very end because this is this one by far works the best. The third one I'm going to explain. Uh, but the second one is referrals. And surprisingly, very few people know how to do referrals. I had a goal this year of doing one lunch every single week with somebody new, uh, usually in the real estate space. And I can't tell you how many deals and how much money I've raised just by going on those lunches. People want to do business with people they know, like, and trust, and they want to bring deals to people that they know, like, and trust. When somebody has a deal and they're thinking about who they should call, who are they going to call? The person that they've, I don't know, seen post on Facebook or has sent them an email 
or someone who's actually met them for lunch or bought them lunch. I always try to make an effort to always buy uh, lunch with people. Uh, this goes back to that book influencer by, I think it was Robert Cialdini. And, you know, if you give somebody something, they just feel obligated to like give back, uh, it, for some reason. Anyway, I always try to buy, I always try to be the one to buy lunch for that reason. So if I call them later, they at least feel like they need to answer the phone call. Um, so referrals work out really well. Usually when I'm having lunch or I'm sitting down with people or I'm meeting with people who find deals, I want to understand what their needs and wants are. What are the gaps in their business? What can I do to add value to them? How can I take it from a step from just being the guy that bought them lunch or called them on the phone to the guy who actually helped them grow their business in some way, shape, or form? So asking those questions is very important when you're doing referrals. It's all about them, what they need help with, and how can you provide value to them? That is the goal of referrals. Making it very clear what you're going after is also good. I'm buying in these areas. The more specific you can be, the more they're going to pick up the phone and call you when they have something that is described. I mean, you got to think about it. If you describe a product that you want and someone says, wow, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about what you're trying to buy. You're telling me if I bring you this, you'll buy it? Yep. And then they bring it to you. What happens? You buy it, right? So that's how referrals work. We spend a ton of time on social media, just putting content out there that's designed to deliver value and explain what we do. You know, it's funny, deals find you, referrals find you when everybody knows what you do. So you need to be posting on whatever platform all the eyeballs are on. In this day and age, it's social media. One of them's not better than the other. Post on all of them. It cannot hurt to gather more eyeballs, but you want to make sure that everybody in your community, and if you don't have time to post every single day on Facebook, make sure you're calling all your friends and family, or at least the people in your circles and explaining to them what they do. Cause I promise you those people, every single person you touch has a spider web of contacts and those people might be the ones that can refer you a really big, fat, juicy deal. So make sure everybody knows what you do so that they can actually refer deals to you. All right, number three, and this is the one I'm most excited about because we're, we're working on some really cool deals right now uh, from this source. But we wanted to tap into the circles of the people who are already doing the rezones, already doing the entitlements. How do we get in touch with them? Because they're they're the, the point of contact for everything that are going on. This would be like the planning commissions. This would be like the building inspectors. It would be like the, the mayors and maybe some smaller local municipalities. And so what we did is we said, why are we trying to take a piece of land and shove it down the city's throat and spend all this time and effort going after these deals that might not pan out because the city doesn't want to see homes be built there or apartments, et cetera, et cetera. Why don't we just go to them and ask them what they want? And by the way, maybe it'd be a good idea to bring a map and have them circle the areas that they want to see develop. Hmm, let's try it. And it worked fantastically. Now, I'm not saying that you can just go walk into the mayor's office of downtown New York and get a meeting, a little bit different setup. But surprisingly, most of the demand, especially after COVID, has moved from the downtown core to the suburbs. And the suburbs are much more accessible. You can meet with those planning commissions one-on-one. -on -one. You can meet, you can catch the local mayors down there, the district councilmen, whoever they are, they're surprisingly, they're happy to meet with you because not a lot of people have shown up and actually met with them and asked them, what do you want? They're used to developers showing up and trying to shove something down their throat. They were astounded when we sat in there with a map and said, what's your vision for the community? What do you want to see? What problems are you currently having in the community? What is it lacking? And then we would follow that up. Hey, where do you want to see density? Where do you want to see apartments? Where do you want to see commercial space? What's the vision here? And they actually showed us and literally circled the areas. Hey, we would support more homes here. We would support more homes here. We want to see some commercial right here. We want apartments right here. And the neat thing about that was all we had to do was just go laser focus on those areas and make sure that we broke through all the other noise that the competitors were making and got straight to the source. So it's interesting what happens when you shut down this massive spray and pray machine and you tell your sales team, we're going to hyper focus on these leads. I need you to call them, knock on their door and leave them a sticky note. Like literally something interesting happens when someone opens the door and sees you on their doorstep. They know that you mean business. You're not there to waste time. And that is called breaking through the noise. So when we go to these doorsteps and we'd meet with them, 
we were asking how the neighborhood was, was it safe? If they knew anybody who wanted to sell, you know, we were interested in buying and we have gotten the majority of our deals through that lead source now, because we are very laser focused on the areas that we want to be doing development in. And we're very good at figuring out ways to add value, which to be honest with you is not super hard because you're usually going to somebody who has an agricultural piece of land or a piece of land is owned for a few homes and explaining to them, Hey, Mr. Seller, your, 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 your home's only worth this much money. But with me, if I can get it rezoned for you, I can pay you double what you're asking for. Or would you be interested in that? They're going to be, when you can pay somebody exponentially more than what their home's currently worth. And they know that you've got their ear. So this is what's worked really, really well for us is going to the the planning commissions, the mayors in the, in the city and asking them what they want, what their vision is, and then asking them where they want to see development and then going direct to those sources and figuring out a way to break through the noise. I promise you, if you follow these steps and you do this, you're going to have way more deals than you have money. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to schedule a call with us and learn more, head on over to hbgcapital.net. We look forward to getting to know you. Till next time.